rutabaga. So, rutabaga. Turn don't up. Turn up some apple. I like to use Fiji apples because they roast really well. Mm. Uh, some regular turnips and some butternut squash. So we're going to go ahead and cut these. We'll start okay. with the apple. Just kind of like, I, I don't I don't mind like not peeling the apple. It kind okay. of gives, makes it like. And just into into coarse shapes or? Kind of like, kind of like chunks. Okay. So we're going to put that on a sheet tray. But we don't want any core. No, no, no core, no seeds. Okay. I'm going to let you cut the apple. And then, you know, the, the rutabaga. Rutabaga is one of those vegetables I feel like people overlook a little bit. But they're really, really good. It's in the turnip family. But originally, the rutabaga was a cross between a, a cabbage and a turnip. It has a little bit of a cabbage yeah. kind of like flavor. Uh, but I, I love it. And we're going to put a little bit of sweetness in there. And with the cran and the white dry turnip, cranberries. Again, in wedges? Uh, yeah, chunks. Th those are kind of like, you know, just chunks. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's okay. fall time. It makes a great presentation in the middle of the, the middle of the table. It's beautiful. So, and so the butternut squash. it's real squash. easy to make those delicious roasted vegetables that you get at restaurants and you never know exactly where they parboiled. So nothing's parboiled. No, no, we're just gonna, you know, put it, you try to make everything the same size yes. so it cooks really, really evenly. And then the butternut squash, you know, I like to peel that. This part I like to save for soup. Oh, the, the bottom? Yeah, oh, so and, just and use and the top? Just, this okay. is always easier to cut, you know, cut because it's a little bit more uniform. So you're opening a new restaurant. I am opening up a new restaurant oh, this November. When? No, oh, November where? If everything works, but in New York sometimes everything doesn't work. Oh yes. But. Well, we'll be we'll be standing in line because we love your food so much. Well, this is you know, I've been doing Italian for like the last five years, and this is going to be. Um, more well, you are American Italian, thing. though, right? Carmelini. Yeah, Italian American. But so I'm going to kind of like have some fun with the American part now. So um, does it have a name? If uh, I was only as good at naming restaurants like I was cooking. <laughs> So you don't know yet? I don't know yet. We're only two months. We don't even have a name yet. Oh. But it's kind of like a process a little bit. You get these, you know, you get this like beautiful space in New York, and then you kind of like start to build it, and we start to cook a little bit, and we start to like figure it out, and then one day you walk in, and we're going to call it X. Uh huh. But we're not going to call it X. Okay. So now, what do you do to these lovely vegetables? So again, we just really simply just kind of toss them around on the sheet tray, and maybe a couple more apples here. And then we're going to season them very, very simply with salt. Actually, that was pepper. That's a quarter teaspoon of pepper and okay. a half teaspoon of salt. Just a little bit of olive oil, probably like two tablespoons of olive oil. Mm. Right on the baking sheet. Right on the baking sheet. Use our hands. Don't be afraid. Just kind of like toss it up. And no other seasoning yet. No other seasoning yet. And we're going to put that, uh, roast that in a 400. 25 degree oven, 450 degree oven for about 15 minutes. Just about when our pork is going to come out, mm -hmm. we're going to put the vegetables in the oven so it kind of like okay. all comes together at the same time. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, yeah. so you can get that in too. Yeah. Okay. Which uh, we're in the oven about 15 to 20 minutes and we have our boozy oh, cranberries. So, oh, so they, did, they did break up a little bit. Yeah, they, they kind of like soak up the liquid uh -huh. and they get, um, you know, nice and soft and we'll just put those inside. You can even put a little bit of the water inside with the, mm, the whiskey yeah. on it. And then we have our pumpkin seeds that have been toasted. In butter. In butter. I'll put those inside. I love that flavor with the pumpkin seeds mm. inside. And then celery leaves. I love to use celery leaves in the winter and the fall. Usually you throw them away. No, I, but I love celery leaves. That's so pretty, too. No need bread baked in a Dutch oven. It was based on the idea that time, rather than kneading, did all the work to create an artisanal quality bread with a crispy, crunchy, dark crust. Today I'll share my version, packed with a healthy dose of seeds and oats and whole wheat flour. So in a bowl, there are two cups of bread flour. To that, add three cups of all-purpose whole wheat flour, half a cup of oats, and we're using rapid rise yeast, also known as instant dry yeast. So you can see it's very fine. It doesn't need to be dissolved in water like the regular active dry yeast. So just sprinkle that right into your mix and two tablespoons of sesame seeds, seeds of the sesame plant native to Africa and India, two tablespoons of flax seeds, two tablespoons of poppy seeds, and four tablespoons of husked or shelled pumpkin seeds. So all of these can be stirred together. 
Oh, and don't forget the salt. Very important for this to have salt. Two tablespoons of coarse salt. I like to use kosher salt. And now dissolve a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar in two and a half cups of cold water. And pour that right into the dry ingredients and stir well. This is like one of the easiest recipes and it's also very nice to serve at a dinner party. And the same bowl is going to be used for letting the bread rise. Very good. Now brush the top of the dough with a little bit of olive oil and cover with plastic wrap. And let it rise at room temperature until doubled in bulk. That's gonna take from 12 to 18 hours. We have one that's already risen. See how the plastic is full of gas? Just pull that off. And that's the gas that comes from the yeast. Scrape this down. Mm, so fragrant. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my surface here and I'm really resisting the urge to knead. You don't have to knead this bread. That's the beauty of it. So use your bent scraper and just form this into a ball. Very nice. So pretty. Now here's your Dutch oven. Brush the bottom and the sides with olive oil. A Dutch oven simulates a baker's oven in that it creates the steam necessary to achieve that nice crispy crust. There, that's, that's good. And a little bit of flour in the bottom. And get your dough right there. And then sprinkle the top of your dough with a little bit of flour. The flour helps the bread get a wonderful dark crust. But now one more step. One large egg white that's going to help all these other seeds adhere to the crust and just brush the top of the bread with the egg wash. And now sprinkle a tablespoon of flax seeds over the surface. Shiny and beautiful and nutritious. And a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds. The same seeds that you put into the dough are now being sprinkled over the top. Poppy seeds, black poppy seeds really darken the top of this loaf. And a tablespoon of sesame seeds. Now you can use white sesame seeds or you could use black sesame seeds, which would give an even darker appearance to our beautiful bread. And now into the top of this beautiful bread, we're going to score an X. Scoring is not just to make a visually pretty design on the top of the loaf, it's also how the baker controls the direction in which the loaf expands. There, that should do it. Very beautiful. So now cover your loaf and let this bread rise until it has expanded, doubled in bulk. Now this has been rising for almost two hours and just sprinkle a little bit of water on the top. This will help create an even crispier crust. Cover and get right into a 475 degree preheated oven. Reduce the heat to 450 degrees, bake for about 45 minutes, uncover and bake 15 minutes longer until it has a beautiful dark brown surface. Look how gorgeous. Cool it in the pot, slice it in half first. Look at the nice texture inside and then just slice it this way. Mm, look how beautiful. I can't wait, I have to try it. Some nice unsalted butter and some homemade apricot jam. That's a whole California apricot. And mm, healthy, very tasty and homemade. Isn't it amazing that baking bread in a pot could yield such incredible results? This is a recipe you have to try. Well, you'll need two cups of freshly grated carrots, and these make the best homemade carrot muffins. Uh, they're spicy, and they are really, really good. I like them for breakfast with a cup of tea. Children love eating them when they get home from school. And the recipe is sort of clever because you can make the batter 
put the batter into muffin papers like this and then put the whole thing into the freezer, well wrapped of course, and you can pop them into the oven when you want fresh muffins. The recipe is from our January-February issue of Everyday Food. Whisk together two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of sugar, and if you use the whisk, you don't have to sift. This breaks up all the lumps. Two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. This is a spice that you can make yourself. It's a mixture of cinnamon, cloves, ginger, nutmeg, and allspice. Two teaspoons of baking powder. And make sure you have fresh baking powder. And three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda because we're using a little bit of yogurt in this recipe. And, oh, don't forget, half a teaspoon of salt. And whisk this up. And in a separate bowl, whisk together one and a quarter cups of yogurt. I like, when I bake, to use plain, regular yogurt. If you're on a diet, you can use low fat. Uh, if you happen to have vanilla yogurt, you could use that. But I like plain yogurt. Why glop it up with anything else? So we need one and a quarter cups for a tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. We've already melted it. And two large eggs. You can break the eggs into a separate bowl first just to make sure they're okay. So every now and then you might get a bad egg. If you're worried about that, break your eggs first, then add all the other ingredients because that bad egg can ruin a cake. So mix this all up together like that. And then add this to your flour. Just make a well right there. And pour all your liquid ingredients in. You can stir it with a spoon or a spatula or whatever. Isn't it nice to make muffins by hand? So it's a nice, rich batter. Now add your carrots, so it's two cups. If you have a food processor, you can grate your carrots very, very quickly in a food processor. And if you're making a lot of muffins, uh, that might help you a lot. But this has such a nice texture with the hand-grated carrots. Carrots are high in vitamin A, beta carotene, uh, very nice. And they add a lot of fiber to these muffins. You could add a little bran to the muffins if you want. And this is a good yogurt-based recipe, which you can add other things so you could turn this, just change the carrots to zucchini, delicious. Mashed bananas, delicious. And so now you spoon or scoop the batter into your prepared muffin tins. Now I like cooking in the paper because each muffin is individual. You don't really mess up your pans. You have less cleanup and this, Recipe makes 12 lovely muffins. This scoop is about a third of a cup in size. And if you want to bake these immediately because your family is standing around looking at you with their mouths watering, uh, preheat your oven at 375 and bake them until they are a nice golden brown on the top, about 20 to 25 minutes if they're not frozen. And if they're frozen, bake them for about 35 minutes in a preheated oven. So I'm gonna put one pan of muffins into the oven, 375, and the other, because I can't wait to have them, and the other pan I'm going to put into the freezer just till they get hard, and as soon as they are, I'm gonna wrap them really well and so tomorrow I can have muffins again and I don't have to go through the process. Earlier this fall, I attended a, a really interesting event in Connecticut called a Farm to Fork Dinner, 
which benefited local farming efforts. And that's where I met my next guest, the chef and owner of the schoolhouse at Cannondale. And that's where I first tasted the delicious autumnal parfait dessert that we're going to make today. Please welcome Tim Labatt. So nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. Thank you so Thank much. You. So um, what inspired the, the Farm to Fork dinner? Really, it's about um, my love of going to Millstone Farm and interacting with the farmers, picking my own vegetables. I was there one day. And my friend, Chef Bill Taibbi from Napa & Company over in Stanford, approached me about doing an event together. So we kind of, being at the farm, we decided it would be such a great thing to be able to actually show our guests what we're doing oh. at the farm. Well, the so dinner was, was so delicious. The first course was a soup, a, t a really good creamy tomato soup made from the farm tomatoes. And uh, it was, they were served in ball jars. And uh, there were lamb meatballs inside from the, lamb, the lambs raised on the farm. Yep. And then on top was a dried, very thin slice of tomato. Yes. It was so pretty and that, so delicious. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of my favorites. And then this parfait. Yeah. Which... This, was, this is one of my favorites. This is one that my pastry chef, Robin Eads, came up from. Uh, she is from oh. Blackberry Farm. And, and well, let's cook favorites. it because uh, it is so good. So it's like sure. a, a one-bowl cake. It's really, yeah, it's very simple. So if you just add the... Eggs. Got, three eggs. Yep, three eggs. And then canola oil. Three quarters of a cup of canola oil. Could you use butter if you wanted? Or? Um, any kind of oil would work, oh, oil. I think. Okay. Um, I haven't tried it with butter. And then, and then sugar in the raw. One and a half cups of raw sugar. Yeah, we use the raw sugar just for the flavor. And, and texture, and too, texture. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then once you get that well incorporated, then we're just going to go ahead and add in, while you're stirring, I'll add... Oh, so no sifting. No, we don't need to sift. This is really, it's almost like a quick bread. Okay. Um, that's the flour. flour. So that's like one and a half cups of regular flour. And then all one purpose. and a half teaspoons of baking powder and then a little bit of salt. Okay. So this then, gets gloppy, so I'm yep. going to stir with a rubber spatula. Exactly. And then you just, um, um, I'll uh, grate the rest of this apple. We're going to put the apple in. Oh, so one whole apple or how many? Um, this is, I used three cups, so it okay. was about, I got about a cup, a cup per apple, so it was about three apples. So coarsely grated. Yep. So you could grate that on the cuisine art if you had one, right? Yep, With the grating absolutely. attachment. I think that's what Robin does down at the uh -huh. restaurant. And then once you get that, you can just, I'm going to dump this right in for you. Okay. And then this really, you don't have to, you just kind of fold this together. Well, what's that? That's a little bit of sage as well. A little? That's yeah. a lot. Is that it, dried or, or fresh? No, that's fresh. We chop oh. it fresh. Isn't that an unusual ingredient in a cake? <laughs> yeah. And it really, this is really about, you know, fall and, and kind of apples and sage and uh, maple syrup. And we're going to put pumpkins in it. And so it's really, when the whole thing comes together, it's really going to be a good representation of fall. So there's a nice batter. Yeah, absolutely. So it's yeah. really like a quick bread. And so then you're just going to go ahead. I will, uh, I'll go ahead and pour this into, I just got a pan here. Um, Lined with parchment. Yep, parchment, a little bit of pan, spray it down, and then we're good to go. So we'll just get it and all And the in oven here. should be uh, 375? Yeah, 375. This is going to go in for about half an hour. Uh, but really, hot. you just got to kind of test it with the, the old sort of Betty Crocker, you know, thing where you put the, uh, put the toothpick in, test it out. Oops. So you just kind of get it. You have it, yeah. Yeah, smooth it yeah. out. And then... <laughs> And there you Granny go. Granny Smith apple. So, so get that into the into the oven. There. Yeah, put and that this, in the oven. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the um, out of the oven. And should we invert it? Uh, sure, you can invert it, and then we'll chop it up. There. All right. Oh, it comes out perfectly. Yep. <gasps> what a beautiful right looking cake. <laughs> Very nice. So, next we're gonna. Next, what I like to do is poach the pumpkins, and I like to use a sugar pumpkin. This is sort of a classic. A lot of chefs like to use these because yeah. they're small. They have a high sugar content. They're easy to work with. So you make a little sachet? Yep, a little sachet. So We're going to put six allspice, eight whole cloves, two star anise, one of my favorite flavors, and one stick of cinnamon just all broken up. Yep. And make that into a little package. Yep. And then while you tie that off, I'll go ahead and um, we would normally chop this up. We've got it chopped up. So what we would normally do next is um, start putting together the poaching liquid. Um, and the poaching liquid, I'm just going to... This is for to, the pumpkin. Yep, this is for the pumpkin. So what we do is we just add some maple syrup, about 
That's about two cups of maple syrup. Wow. One cup of water. Now, where do you get all that maple syrup? Has to be the real thing, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We use grade B because grade B is, has a little bit more of that caramely flavor mm -hmm. to it. Um, Does this wanna, go in there? Yep, you can toss that in there. And then we're going to toss in about a cup of sugar. Um, and really, mm. all we need to do now is just we're going to kind of stir this, get it mm. to the... Um, get it to the stage where the sugar is melted. So we've got that kind of over here. Uh, once the sugar and everything is kind of incorporated. You add the pumpkin? We, yeah, we can add the pumpkin. Okay. Uh, so you add the pumpkin right in there. Wow, that's so good. And then in order to kind of get it all, all marinated in there, um, so that none of the parts are going to be hard. Oh, so we'll these are going to just get to cook until tender and, oh, I see. That's, exactly. That's what you layered yeah. that cake with. And then those will oh. end up being, those, and you can serve them warm or, or mm. cold. Part of so the, part beautiful. of the challenge of the um, rest of the field catching up at the farm was that we didn't have a freezer and, and we did, and we didn't have a, uh, you just, an oven, so. You did very well. The, so, yeah. the, uh, everything was so utterly delicious. So now that we have the major components done, uh, we just need to make the apple caramel cream and we'll be ready to serve them. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're back with Connecticut chef Tim Laban of the schoolhouse at Cannondale, and we're about to make the apple caramel cream that's going to be layered with the apple sage cake. And uh, oh my God, I, I just want to keep going. Now we have apple cider. What's that going to be for? Absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting a little bit of apple cider in a pan. Like two cups? Yep, two cups, one stick of cinnamon, and we're going to bring that up to a boil. Yeah. Um, so we started with two cups. We're going to reduce that down to about a cup and a half. Is that okay, this one? That's perfect. Okay. So then what we're going to do is, with that still on the heat, oh, okay. I'll go ahead and I'll add another cup and a half of grade B maple syrup. That's another batch, or is that yeah, the one that is, you've already this flavored? Is, no, this is just maple syrup. Um, now it's going to be, it's going to be like maple-y, um, apple-y. We're going to add mm. a little bit of cream. Like and this cup? is, yep, and this is a cup. This is really going to kind of like make it a very rich, um, rich, flavorful. This is the sauce that's going to go over the whole thing. Um, so once that's combined. Um, and this is enough cream that's going to be for that whole cake. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to be the parfait. So this is going to be on top. It's kind of the saucy. Like, like, like ice cream? or It'll be sort of a combination cream. of sauce and it's frothy and it's going to be. Um, kind of foamy, almost like whipped cream, mm, but... It tastes so good with yeah. apple cider in it. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So good. That's, it's so good. It's so rich. It's so, like, just mm. says fall. So that should be hot? That'll be hot. Okay. And what we can do is, once that's hot, we can go ahead and we can actually pour it right in here. Okay, so... If you want me to pour... You want to fry those little sage leaves first? Sure. We can just, fry the sage. Yeah. If you want to just toss... We'll just toss these in. These literally take, you know, 20 seconds, depending on how hot the oil is. This will be... That's fine. Oh, there. So, oh, look. And the fragrance of this just like fills, oh, so fills the room. Oh, so fried sage leaves. Yep. And as soon as the um, as soon as the bubbles stop, that's really your indication to take it out. Um, and it's it really just is so like reminds me of you know my mom's house when I was a kid and the the sage kind of filling the air and. Did she fry? Did she deep fry sage? No, she didn't. No. But you know. The, just like sage. Nobody and, even thought to deep fry <laughs> basil or parsley or sage or nobody did. This is a pretty, it's, that's why I very, love sage. It's a fall, it's, it's a great for fall. Yeah. It's pretty hearty. So that's almost ready. So that, yeah. now we have to pour this. Yep. Now while that finishes okay. off, I'll, I'm going to turn this okay. off because it'll I'll finish. Watch that. And then you can pour it right in there. And I'll hold it for you. That's probably a good amount right there. Yes. Yeah, these little, um, this is called an icy whip. This is like not your normal whipped cream canister. Um, this one has the capability of having hot things in it. So it whips, the, it, whips it hot? Yep, so you can mm. have it, normally the pressure, there's, you know, the pressure builds up or something with the regular ones. So those are good, we'll pull those out. Okay, look how pretty. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, and so. Once they dry out, they'll be nice and crispy. Okay. Um, and it'll be a per perfect, um, perfect garnish so now down here we have everything that we need to assemble um, so what I like to do is I'll start with you know a couple of pieces of the pumpkin so I have to, do I have to ch put this well yeah what we normally do is we'll put that on and we'll charge it with um, this nitrous we'll charge it with the nitrous 
and then it makes it really foamy. I've got one over here that we can use as well. Is this charged already? Or uh, charged? I don't think we have any chargers for that one. Oh, okay. That one's just for show. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, so now. So now we're going to assemble the um, parfait, and we've got all of our fork tender pumpkin in here. So and you can reuse that that mixture. Oh yeah. Some more. Yeah, in there. definitely. Okay. We, you know, we'll reuse it when we're done with it. Um, so how many pieces? I usually put like two pieces to start of the pumpkin, maybe maybe two pieces of the apple sage cake, and then two more pieces of pumpkin. Just kind of stack it all in here. Oh, so this is rich. Another piece of cake, or another? Yeah, another piece of cake or two, and then. And then what you can do is you can pour a little bit of the poaching liquid over the whole thing. Mm, this is gorgeous. So I like to use the, there we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then. So that's, the cake soaks up more of the maple syrup. Yes. Oh, wow. So this is like apple, sage, pumpkin, candy, sugar. This is like fall in a glass. And then we top it all off with this hot sort of maple cream and it kind of runs all over it yum and it really you get so much of so much fall flavor in all these different what a gorgeous parfait so i will take a little taste of the pumpkin oh that it's pumpkin is the best pumpkin in the whole world yeah, it's so good. Tastes like candy. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, just so, so curves? delicious and soft. Just like at the dinner. Mm. Thank you. Well, you might want to add this to your Thanksgiving menu. Thanks so much, Tim. It's wonderful. And good luck with the restaurant. Well, we just love when the mail is delivered here at the show. Along with your wonderful letters, we've been receiving videos for our series called People Call Me Martha. Today's video is from viewer Donnell Chambers of Kansas City, Missouri. Take a look at this. Hi, Martha. My name is Donnell Chambers. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I love to bake. I have been inspired to create new cake recipes. And one of such recipes I want to share with you today is the orange pumpkin spice cake. I've been called a perfectionist, and I do like good things. So we have a lot in common. Please welcome Donnell to the show. Welcome. Hi, Martha. Really great, to, great see to see you. Yeah. I want to really get started with this cake because you're really going to love it. Well, they told me that it takes a little while, so we have to just go along. And right. Do it. Okay. Now, first here in the mixer, you need to cream together three sticks of butter, which is one and one half salted cup. Salted or unsalted? Unsalted. Okay. With three cups of sugar. If you'll turn that on, Martha. And you cream that to a medium speed, about three minutes. And then we're going to add six eggs, one, okay, at a time. one at a time. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to sift together three cups of flour. Good teacher. Very good teacher. I'm going to put in one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and one teaspoon of baking powder. Now, okay. we're going to put all that in. And also a half so, a teaspoon. And cloves. Don't forget the cloves. Oh, yes. A fourth a teaspoon yeah. of cloves. And a half a teaspoon of salt here. Okay. Now, we'll just sift that together real quickly there. And then if we That's we'll a very nice way to do move it. So down, measure, measure it all out like yes, that. Was that your idea? Yes. Perfect. I do that at home. Isn't that a great <laughs> idea? That is a good thing. And, yes. and then if you'll help me here, Martha... If we're, we're going to add alternately the flour and the half a cup of buttermilk. Okay. Now, if you'll help me there, if okay, we'll so turn this on slowly because we don't want flour flying everywhere. Right. And uh, you'll add flour oh, first. Oh, and buttermilk, then, my favorite ingredient. And then you add buttermilk. Don't you love how it makes it a nice texture? I love that. Yeah, I love that. Okay, here we go. And always add f your last flour last. Never add the liquid last. Oh, really? Why? because it does not mix good. Okay. Now we're going to add to that one and a half teaspoons. We want here a good vanilla. Uh, yep. Best vanilla. That is the yeah. best vanilla. I love that vanilla. So there goes a last bit go. of flour. And also the zest of one orange. 
Can you give me a hand oh, I can. Yep, scraping definitely. that? <laughs> Thank you. So the zest of a whole orange, a bright-skinned right. orange. Yeah. And a half a cup of pumpkin, oh. Paris pumpkin. Okay, so do you use um, you know, homemade or canned? You can use either one. Okay. And uh, it works very well with either one. And I find that canned pumpkin is actually really good for pies and uh, yes. and it's just and it's a sort of a pain to make your right. own pumpkin curry. Yes, because you have to roast the yeah. pumpkins in the and it's, oven. It's one of but the... you can be adventuresome. Yeah. <laughs> you can. And so okay. anyway, we'll let that mix and okay, we want to well, turn it. I just want to scrape it down. Yeah, scrape it down good. This is a nice get, big cake. Get, get all those good oh, yeah. ingredients in yeah, there. Yeah, all mixed up. Okay, now we're going to turn this. this side. Okay, that's great, oh, okay. great, great. You're doing fine, Martha. I am. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I pass the test. Yes. I pass the test. Yes, you do. Do you think did. I can bake a cake? I know you can. Okay. <laughs> and now what Is we're going to do? We're going to take that. Oh, it tastes really good. So I always, I always taste the batter. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. I find myself licking the paddle at oh, home. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, and here, oh, see all and oh, all the. Oh yes, get all that yep. good stuff off of there. All that orange zest. Oh, it always yes. sticks to the paddle. I don't. No, I don't you know, know this is really a grand reunion for us because I met you three years ago in Kansas City. We did when? Yes, well, you were at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Oh, I And was. you were doing a showing, and I got photographed in the Kansas City Star uh -huh. with you. Okay. And, so. So mm. now we're gonna oh, put this here. Here's your here's your scraper. Okay, we're gonna pour this into the pan. And this is a 10-inch tube pan that has been floured and buttered. Is that a non-stick? Yes, anyway, non-stick. Yeah. And you want to make sure you get all of that in there, every last bit. Yep. Just like my mother told me. Yes. I mean, our house, we had rubber scrapers, I think, before anybody else on the street. <laughs> no, really. Oh, really? Because she was very frugal about that. She, did never, she never wanted you to leave a speck of batter or dough in the... In yes. the pan. And, and then we get that into the oven at 350 for one See? hour and 15 minutes. See, I'll show you. I'll get another quarter oh, cup out of there. Oh, you got another one. You're good, I'm, Martha. I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just a pest. You're good. And then after it bakes for an hour and 15 minutes, we make our glaze here. So 350, right? Yes. Okay. 350 for an hour and 15 okay. minutes. We're going to add the juice of one orange, and we're going to just add in here not a whole lot, about three tablespoons. Of orange juice? Yes. Okay. Two teaspoons of zest, about two teaspoons in here. And what you're going to do, you're going to mix all that together. And this makes a wonderful glaze. I love orange glaze. And we'll glaze. just show the finished glaze over okay. here. Then you take the glaze. So you cool the cake. Yes, a cool bit. it for about 15 okay. minutes. Okay, okay. And then spoon all that beautiful glaze over the cake. Oh, just Fabulous. let it soak in. Let it soak in. Let it have its day. <laughs> yes, let it soak. You're all going to make this cake. You oh. know that, right? This is and a then good over cake. over here, we have the finished cake. And Martha, I am so happy at this point to be able... To give you and a I'm very slice. Happy, I'm very happy to receive a slice of this wonderful Look at that great color. Cake. That is a beautiful color. Don't you want one to know? Oh, sure. I, I see. I, <laughs> I'll eat the whole top because I love the glaze. Sure. So. This is a beautiful I'm gonna take cake. Just a little bit mm. here for myself. You will ah. definitely make this cake. Thank you so okay. much, and thank, thank you, you for coming all the way to New York. Enjoyed it. And you're going to get now a People Call Me Martha t-shirt. Mm. Here it is, People Call Me Martha. Oh, thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you. So it's great. really, really you great. Again. Thank you. Wouldn't your fall table look great with one of these pumpkins sitting at each place setting? And the pumpkins are not only sweet to look at, they're sweet to eat because they're made from dried figs that are piped with ganache filled with ganache, and then dipped in orange chocolate. And they're the masterpieces of John and Kira's, a Pennsylvania-based chocolate company whose secret is its fresh, locally grown ingredients. Please welcome the husband and wife team of John and Kira. Kira, John, very nice to see you. Now, 
How, when did you start this company of John and Kira? Uh, we started about six years ago. I was working in New York in a bank as an analyst, and I was miserable. <laughs> you I were. Said, I, have, I wanted to be the art director. I didn't want to be doing all this quantitative stuff. So I said, I have to change careers. So uh, I got a job as a cook in Manhattan, and then I moved down to Philadelphia to work at a socially responsible business, a socially responsible restaurant called the White Dog Cafe. Oh, yes. That's actually where I met him. Oh, so I oh, met oh. John through the White Dog Cafe, and we sort of hit it off instantly. Um, and it was really cute. He sort of pursued me through uh, following me through to parties that I was hosting. No, I, I, invited, <laughs> I invited myself. Uh-oh, we're going to yeah. start an argument. I uh -oh. invited myself to one of her parties. I was so embarrassed. Uh, oh, it was, <laughs> it was no, that's really nice. Cute. So how else are you going to get to know each other, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And then, and then what happened? You got... Well, um, things he really enjoyed uh, the white, the social responsible business part of the White Dog, and he sort of took this road trip up the Northeast to figure out what he could do with a food that would incorporate um, ingredients from family farms. And he discovered chocolate was what he wanted to do. And so you, and so you decided on the name John and Lisa. I mean, John and Kira. <laughs> um, yes, that was actually a really cute story. We were thinking together about the name, and um, let me just show the box. And I said, Well, John, you have to have something that you, there it is. I said, you have to have a name that you, of something you really love. And he said, well, Kira's? And I thought, oh my goodness, that's the first time he told me he loved me. Uh, so it was, the, it was the cutest thing. We'd uh, only been dating for six months, so it was, it was well, really Well, I love sweet. the boxes. Uh, the name is, it's just, it's, it looks so pretty on the boxes, too, with the, the uh, little Anne yeah, on, on the Anne side. Yeah. yeah, it's really yeah. great. So, um, so I really, I, I think that our audience really wants to know what your chocolates are like. So can we make this this wonderful ganache filled fig. We're going to start making okay. the ganache right okay. now. We're going to take some uh, cream and we're going to put some cloves inside to flavor so it. So oh, it's okay. a about 20 whole cloves. To one and a third cups of cream. That's right. Okay. Where do you get the figs, the dried figs? The, uh, the figs are coming up. We get them from, uh, we can use any type of fig, any type of American or Turkish fig, the Jubaina right. Specialty Store. We happen to use uh, figs from a small family farm in Spain. Uh -huh. They're called like Calabacita fig. Uh, but they're not they're generally. Delicious yeah, figs. they're delicious. Which yeah. means actually little pumpkins, so okay. it's perfect. So and this has to gonna, come to a boil? This right. one right behind us is coming to a boil right now. This is sort of ready to pour, I think. Oh. And is that okay yeah. if we ask okay. you to, to, uh, to pour that one in? Okay. So ganache is really um, heavy cream um, it poured into uh, chopped up chocolate. And you're using milk chocolate, which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's and exactly what kind of chocolate right. do you use? We use Valrona chocolate in all of our confections, and it is just wonderful stuff. We're gonna add, what we're going to do now is going to ask, um, would you like to stir it? Oh, sure. Okay. Just and as you stir, we're going to add the butter. I'll take this. You have to make sure oh, that I the see. butter is warm, room temperature. Right. You don't want it to be liquidy, but um, room temperature is the best. So I'm okay. just going to So butter in into mm, chocolate lots of butter. <laughs> yep. with cream. And then okay. we're going to add the whiskey. Oh, what kind of whiskey? Oh, uh, this is Jameson Irish whiskey. Oh, yum. Oh, no. <laughs> Only the best. Oh, look, we have an Irish man here yeah. enjoying right. his... <laughs> and as you work that, that's going to um, come together. It takes a little bit of work, but it's going to come together after a minute or so. Okay. Ultimately, it's going to look um, like this. Once okay. it comes together, you put it inside the refrigerator for about two hours, and we'll end up with a ganache that looks just like Well, when you say like comes this. together, the chocolate uh, softens, melts, it all mm -hmm. becomes smooth. It exactly. all becomes smooth and binds okay. together in an emulsion. So I'll just keep stirring this until it becomes smooth, and you can want to fill the figs, or should I? Oh, well, you know I, what we're going to do? do we're going we're to leave it right okay. there, and we're going to move right over to okay. um, filling the figs. I hate to leave a task undone. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell you a little bit about some, one of our social programs that okay, we do yes, with the company I'd love while to you know. mix it or, no, or no, while no. we're Let's piping these Let's fill figs, yes. Okay. okay. Um, why don't you start off telling about the, the fi how the to figs. pipe the figs. Okay. And then I'll... We're going to start off with this fig and a piping bag that's already filled with ganache. And there's, a little, there's a little piping tip on top. Yeah, and you have one too. Yeah. Now, as we start with this, we're going to take the fig in this hand. Actually, put the piping pad down. I'm sorry. Okay. And we're going to make take this and make a little bit of a hole. Okay. Right. And then we're going to take right a right next. In the base of the fig. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and you then, can either use a knife or. Or we can actually use a little. Um, if you grab this, okay. we'll take yeah. this and just put it in. Just we like to use these because it actually pulls out the center a lot of times oh, when excellent. we put that in. Okay. So it's a little trick. And so then these are really handmade chocolates. Yeah, they certainly are. And then we're going to massage the fig just a little bit so that the, the hole that we created pops up a little bit and that we're ready. And we're going to hold it rather tight. And then with this hand, we're going to take the pastry bag. And just with your finger, you're just going to make sure that the nozzle goes in all the way. Okay. want to make sure that you've got a really tight hold on the yeah. back of that. Um, okay. Now let me see. Perfect. Sweet. Perfect. Okay. Now, very carefully, you're going to hold the um, the fig and you're going to pump with the pastry bag until 
the fig begins to expand. It expands, 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 and it's starting to look like a pumpkin. We're almost there. Is uh, that working? Yeah. yeah. This is a new product for us, and I've just been learning how to do it. It takes a couple tries um, to get it right. But um, Okay, and once know. it feels pretty full, and you can lick off the down. excess. And you can exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part. I always lick it off. I wasn't sure if I should do yeah. that. Of course. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab it by the little by the tip, and we're going to just put it down here and push it down, push it down just a little bit. So it looks. So it pumpkin. begins to really look like a pumpkin. Oh, it's okay. very cute. So we're nice almost there. Little wrinkly pumpkin. And now we're going to pick it up. And this is... Um, Mine looks more like a Hubbard squash. Oh, no. <laughs> That's all right. You could be artistic. We're going to very carefully dip it inside the orange chocolate. So how did you color the orange? It's white chocolate with an uh, orange food coloring? That's what we do. We uh -huh. used a compound chocolate that's available at any candy store. Now, for the show. For the, yeah. for the show. You can buy this um, at any candy store, and you just melt it in the microwave. Now you're going to wipe There's it a little chips, bit. Though. Okay. And as we do that, we're in good shape. And now and we're going to take... You can either use a fork or a dipping fork, whichever okay. you have handy. This you can buy at a candy distributor or right, use a fork and just could, make little Could I give your marks. forks? Oh, here. Thanks. Just like a pumpkin has, little ridges. And, and as we oh. turn it around, we're just going to touch it. I wondered how you got those little ridges. Let me just put it down where it cool. I and love this. It's so pretty. So we can try and do another one as I sort of talk a little bit about one of our programs that we have, which is called Project Mint Patch, right. um, which is um, our partnership with a group of um, public school students um, who we've been In working... In Pennsylvania? Yes, who we've been working with since before the company started, um, and they have their own urban garden. And I, we thought, okay, this is perfect for us. We'll get some them to produce something for, our, for us to put in our chocolates, and they grew mint for us. And oh. Grow mint, um, they, we get two pounds a week from them, and it's also a chance for them to do sort of interning um, and get sort of entrepreneurial skills. They come with us to the chocolate shows and talk about their program. Yeah, so you're, you're teaching while you are um, making chocolates while you are running a business. Exactly, Excellent. exactly. Well, thank you both very much for sharing your story. And uh, look for John and Kira's chocolates. And if you want to know where they're sold, go to MarthaStewart.com. There's a whole list of wonderful results. Back on here in the kitchen with Everyday Food co-host Margot Olshan. And we're about to discover how sweet a sugar pumpkin like this can be. And Margot, welcome. Thank you. How's Great the restaurant going? So great. Thank Mar you. Margot has a restaurant in Stamford, Connecticut. Tell us about it and where it is. Margot Cafe and Wine Bar in Stamford, Connecticut. And uh, it's a lovely little European-style cafe. And I have to say... With everything that's going on in the economy, we are a great value. So we're doing very well. Knock wood. I, I am everything so, is good. And you brought your daughter here My today. My daughter's here. Hi, how are My you? My little girl. Hi, I'm good. How are you? Really great. Great you have a little Madeline? You. Yes, little Madeline. I mean, she's like uh, grown up. Where are you at school now? Um, I go to NYU. I'm oh, a wonderful. Junior. So you're right around the corner. <laughs> yep. Yep. Excellent. Well, it's so nice to have you here. It's nice to Are you here. following in your mother's footsteps with cooking? Yeah. Not really. I cook sometimes, but... <laughs> I'm not. But why, why cook when your mother cooks as exactly. well as she cooks, right? <laughs> right. Well, um, so let's get started. Okay. Now, they said it was easy to... I, I've been hacking away at this uh, <laughs> pumpkin since I uh, got on the set here. Do we have I'm, a medic on set? We're not going to do case. this. Okay. Cut the bottom off and the top off. Right. I need... I actually need a machete. These these, seem, these are a little hard. Yeah, some, harder than yeah, you would find in get, the grocery. Find a soft skin sugar pumpkin, right. little sugar pumpkin like this, and uh, cut the top off, the bottom off, and then peel it. Peel with, it with one of these. And okay. you know, they gave me a great tip I in the kitchen. These, I think these are from last year. <laughs> Maybe they're fake. Maybe these are I fake. I think these are fun kids. I, yeah. I, I think if you banged it on the floor... <laughs> They're, they're doing that on purpose. Uh, yes. That's right. That's right. It's you're on sabotaging purpose. us. Yes. So okay. here is one This is already. what it looks like peeled. Yes. And then... So here's your knife. Okay. Okay, so cut it in half. Uh, or... Yeah, we can cut it in half. Nope, oh, no, knife. but we're supposed to hollow out the seeds. Yeah. Well, you know what? You can do it either way. Okay. Okay, I'll do it in half. Okay. And you can do it that way. Yes. Once and... through the skin, you can just take out yeah, all those seeds. Yeah, it's much softer. Seeds. Save those. Save them. Roast them. Didn't we always roast them oh. when you were a little girl? Always. And, yeah, we never. Always. I, not every seed had to be saved. It was yes. just in, very important. A uh, little salt, little any kind of seasoning you like, and roast them. So... All right, well, we're going to move on Where's here. my pumpkin carving kit? It has that fabulous nice. scraper, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's a great Perfect tool. Perfect for getting out the seeds. All right. So scrape that all out, cut mm -hmm. it into chunks. Let's come over here. Okay. And, um, sorry, I shouldn't be touching my hair while I'm cooking. These that's are okay. about two-inch pieces. Right. They actually shrink, as you know, after you cook them. 
So what a great simple recipe this is. Oh. A little olive oil, about three tablespoons. But you were always good at roasting vegetables. I do it all the time yes. at the restaurant. Yes. They're excellent. They're great. They're healthy yes. and so People easy. People love that. So about three tablespoons of really good um, olive oil. Olive oil. Virgin olive oil, green olive oil, yes, flavorful okay. olive oil. You can right. smell it. That's what makes the dish. These are shallots, and they're quartered. If they're giant shallots, go a little smaller. But let's just put them all Peeled over. Peeled and quartered. Mm -hmm. And this is sage, which we have. Oh, don't you love sage? Yes. But if you don't have sage, you could use thyme. You yeah. could use rosemary. But this looks really great yep, once you cook it. It does. And, yes, let's and spread those out. And a sprinkling of freshly ground Salt. black pepper. Yep. And, salt. of course, salt. That's it. And... So I always toss it a little. Yes. Well, I do it with my hands, yeah, of course. Okay, but. okay so this goes beautiful. right into what temperature? Uh, about 450 degrees and uh, for about a half hour and turn them halfway through. We always rotate and you can even toss them a little bit. Yeah. And they come out, they have this beautiful... Now, how many of you in the audience roast vegetables like this? Do you do this on a regular basis? Easy. Easy. Oh, good. Right. So you can do carrots, you can do parsnips, you can do turnips, oh, yeah. sweet rutabagas, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yep. Butternut plain squash. potatoes, and here they are. Yep, oh, they it's... are caramelized, beautiful, and um, the mm. sage is just kind of dried. I like to I eat. I love to eat herbs like that. Yes. Oh, this looks so good. This is my lunch. Uh, oh, and you know what else? This would be so great just put on top of a boiled pasta. Yes, that's what I Wouldn't was going to say. Anything left over, mm. turn into a meal the next Notice day. Notice I'm taking pasta. half. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so flavorful and Beautiful. so delicious. Oh, here, that's oh, for you. Thank I'll, you. I'll make thank me you. A, a dish, too. And uh, this is a, another spectacular healthy recipe. Around My French Table is a collection of stories, helpful tips, and wonderful recipes that my first guest has collected over the past 30 years, traveling and living in France. Please welcome James Beard award-winning cookbook author, Dory Greenspan. <laughs> Bigger than Dory. <laughs> it weighs more than Dory. Uh, 4.8 pounds. Four, yes, yeah, one a, in each hand and you've got your workout. You, you, you certainly know. do. Now, what is it about France that you fell in love with? And, 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 oh, and Martha. I mean, I, I know. I know how much you love yes. France. <laughs> Everything. From I put my feet down in France and thought this was where I was meant to be born. My mom made a mistake. Brooklyn. Yeah. She had me in Brooklyn. Yeah, wrong place. Right. Meant to be had right in Right time, wrong place. But, you know, it's, it's the country. It's the people. It's the food. It's the way it's the way people love food in France. Right. It's so much a part of the culture. I right. love that. And um, how would you describe French cooking today? Because I know it has evolved. It really has changed. I think it's simpler. I think it's brighter. It's more modern. In fact, you know, I think that French food is more recognizable to Americans now than it's ever been. That you know, we've changed. They've changed. And we've kind of met somewhere um, in the Atlantic. The food so really how did you changed. gather all the recipes, the th more than 300 really nice recipes in your book? This was so much fun for me because this is, I've lived in Paris as a part-timer. I've had, I always say I have a kitchen in Paris um, for about 14 years now. And so these are recipes I make at home. Re I chose my friends well. They're good cooks. Where in Paris so, do you live? I'm in the 6th. Oh, great. I'm in Place de Uh-huh. It's so, really wonderful. And so right near the market. Right and... near the market. And so it's my food. It's food from friends. It's food from chefs. I call it elbow on the table food because it's really simple food to have people sit around your table and enjoy for anything. Yeah. Well, I want to learn something from you today, a recipe from this book, and we're going to make, I don't know if any of you have some of these left over from Halloween, I certainly do, and from Thanksgiving. And for Thanksgiving. Uh, I certainly have a few little sugar pumpkins left and uh, that we haven't fed to the chickens. I say <laughs> Your the, chickens are the best oh, they fed are, chickens they're in the America. Best. <laughs> uh, but, um, but I, I certainly do save a few of these because they're so good for you. Pumpkin is so good, and squash, and any and, any nice uh, squash that that you can actually. You have to do a little work there. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's not, not done no, yet. No, it's oh, I'm not done to yet. It's off. almost. So we're let's see. I think I'll do it. I'll do you it. Want to so, do that? Yeah, so we don't. Okay, and if you do that. Um, and will you do the goopy job? Will you take what? out the innards? Oh, that's not nothing. That's fine. Okay. Okay. I like I'm, doing that. I'm going to chop some bacon over So we're going to make a stuffed pumpkin with everything good. That's the title, right? That's the title. Stuffed. Pumpkin stuffed with everything good. Ooh, and, yes. you know, if you don't have a pumpkin left over, you could do this in a winter squash. 
This is a recipe. I think that this recipe is more of an arts and crafts project. Oh. Now, than now a where recipe. in France would this be made typically? Well, actually, I got this recipe from a friend of mine in Lyon, and her husband grows pumpkins. And I love this. When the pumpkins are small, her children go out into the field and they carve their names in the pumpkin. Oh, yes. And then their names grow with the pumpkin. And when it comes time to cook them, they have... They have their um, own pumpkins. Their own little monogrammed pumpkin, yes. This has a lot of I nice seeds in it. This would be, which, of this course, little. save and toast. Or plant again next year. Or plant again. I had pumpkins, volunteer pumpkins, from my compost heap this wow. year. Wow, yeah. where's that? In Connecticut. In really? Westbrook, Connecticut, yeah. Huh. So, all right. Now, this is really... I'm using... A quarter pound of stale bread. Yes. And what kind? French bread? I hope French bread. Bien sûr. Baguette. Of course. But you really can use any bread. And a quarter pound of... This is mixed. This is Gruyere and Emmental and cheddar. Oh, so a lot of cheese. A mm. lot of cheese. Just cut... But, you know, once again, this is such a great recipe because you can play with it. You could use blue cheese in this. It's great with blue cheese. Really? Oh, I never, never thought that. Well, and if you use blue cheese, if you put some apples in it, it's really great. So a t tablespoon of thyme, a quarter cup of chives, because I like chives. I'm going to get all the membrane out of there, right? Okay. All that fiber. Good. And we've got three cloves of garlic. And I'm going to add just a little salt and pepper. And if you would put some salt and pepper. Oh, I will. Inside the pumpkin. On, on the flesh. Yeah. Mm. And now the chopped bacon. You could use a spoon for this, but I love getting my hands in food. So bacon. Any bacon. special kind? French bacon? Um, well, actually, you know, you can use... Um, I like apple smoked bacon in this, but you could also use sausage meat. This is really a recipe to play with. A recipe with really very few rules. So... Now, if you would... Nice. Yeah. Okay, do you want to just grate a little nutmeg? That's heavy Inch cream, cream. Okay. half a cup. And I'm... Actually, I'm going to change sides with you for a second, okay. and I'll just put this in. I like nutmeg with squash, too, and pumpkin. All right. It's just... It's also, I think of it as... Whenever I put nutmeg and cream, I think of quiche mm, yes. because there's always a little. So it will be a little custardy, right? It will be a little custardy, though the bread will take up most of it. And, you know, it's hard to know because pumpkins are all different sizes. You might have a little bit left over. You might have to cut a bit more. It's hard to give. Yep. Pour it in. Sure. So it's... this certainly is very simple. Oh, very, very simple. Mm. And I'm trying to get all the bread wet. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then it will just soak in as it bakes. I just, you know, I just love the look of so it. So it is sort of quiche, but no egg. No egg, no egg. Just some cream. You could put nuts in this with um, walnuts or pecans would be great. Certainly. It's really You could do easy a dry fruit, with. sort of like a dry fruit stuffing, too. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Actually, you know, a friend of mine used his leftover turkey stuffing at Thanksgiving and, and put filled the pumpkin. the pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. nice. So now that and the top, right. we put so the top right back top on. Top right on. So this goes into the oven for about an hour and a half. Okay. And then for the last half hour, I like to take the top off and just get it a little brown. Okay. And, and look how pretty this is. is it, I just, I love the way it's so, it's burnished yeah. almost. Oh, it's no, really, it's, really, really Did you really put any pretty. butter or oil on the outside? No. No, Nothing. it just ah. kind of changes this way. And then oh. here's our... All done. Do you want to cut? Yeah, do you slice it into... Well, there are two ways. I think, yeah, you slice it. But sometimes um, I serve it by just taking a spoon in and scooping. Oh, okay. Oh, that looks awfully good, Dory. Oh, that does look good, look doesn't how, it? Look I how love nice. this dish. A half is too much. Half is too much. A quarter is, I think, just right. Of this size pumpkin. Of this. Well, and you know, this can be, if you make a smaller portion, it can be a side mm. dish. It could be a main course. Um, leave out the bacon. It's a great vegetarian yeah, main course. Yeah, very nice. Here we go. Look how pretty that looks.